The 2024 hybrid TRD Off-Road, TRD Pro, and Trail Hunter are on the horizon. But with previous generations, the top tier Tacoma wasn't much more than a lift kit and badging. But with the fourth generation of these trucks, the hybrid variants are receiving some notable upgrades and the top tier Trail Hunter and TRD Pro models are getting exclusive features and some you may not be aware of. Throughout the course of this video, let's dive into the advantages of buying the Trail Hunter, the Pro, and in some cases, the TRD Off-Road Hybrid. Please note that I think the ISO dynamic seats of the TRD Pro have been covered enough that I don't need to cover it any further. Hey guys, Tyler with Independence Overland. So today I wanted to go over the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter because these trucks are quite a bit different than the TRD Off-Road. As with previous generations, it's basically been the same truck. Aside from a few um, interior upgrades, the raised air intake that the third gen had briefly and it went away because it was kind of an afterthought rather than a plan from the ground up thing that we're getting now. And then also uh, it was kind of a suspension package. And I've been seeing online that a lot of people are still saying, I can just buy a TRD off-road and build it up and basically have the same truck for cheaper. And while that is true, there's more to these trucks now than just a badge. So I wanted to touch on some of this stuff. Some of this is 100% confirmed. I've heard it from the chief engineer's mouth. And some of this stuff is coming from different things that I've read across forums. I am gonna be using a lot of regurgitated video uh, just because I can't necessarily take video from all of these other YouTubers. But there are people that have gotten to go to these events and see these things up close. And I've watched basically every video there is about the Tacoma out on YouTube right now. So I have recently shared on the channel that I do have three deposits on a trail hunter and I've had those deposits for well over a year. So I'm hoping to be one of the first people to get one. I know to a lot of you, uh, that doesn't seem very advantageous because it's a new generation. There's probably gonna be problems. There may be problems, but from a channel perspective, it makes sense for me. And I've wanted a new truck since the 2016 third gens came out and I'm just now able to actually uh, pull something like this off. None of the YouTubers that have gone to these events have had the opportunity to drive the hybrid jet and that would be the TRD off-road, uh, the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter or what I'm focusing mostly on this channel, the limited in stuff that's kind of outside of the spec of what I'm interested in. So I'm not gonna touch on that one very much. So in this video, I just wanna touch on some of the new information that I've gathered and I will probably be doing one more of these in between now and the time that I get my Trail Hunter, assuming once again that I have one of the early ones. It'll be cool for you guys to see this thing in factory form and I will be taking off-roading and I will be testing the skid plates and stuff like that. I'm not gonna be easy on my new truck. I'm gonna treat it just like I have my FJ if you watch my adventure videos then uh, you understand that I actually use this thing. I go through rivers, I beat it on rocks, I do all sorts of stuff. So if I do have any issues with this generation of truck, I will share that with you guys. I really hope I don't have any issues with this truck because of the cost involved with buying this thing, but uh, we'll get more into the pricing later in this video. We don't have any official specs on that yet, but uh, there's a lot of speculation on what these are gonna cost and it's gonna be pretty crazy, but we'll get into that here shortly. So I'm gonna go through this list here and I will give you guys this information. And if it is in rumor territory, I will let you know on that. But uh, I do have a whole list of stuff here that I think will be interesting. If you haven't seen my most recent Tacoma video, you should go watch that. It's got almost 400,000 views. So you probably have, I assume, if you're watching this one, but um, if you haven't, then go check that out and I will try not to be repetitive with this information, but that video also has a lot of good info from the early specs um, from the Overland Expo earlier in the year. Okay, so with these trucks, there are going to be obviously suspension systems that are different. So from what I understand, the TRD Off-Road does have a slight lift. It's a little bit taller than some of like the SR5s and stuff like that. But the TRD Pro and the TRD Trail Hunter do have exclusive suspension systems. So the TRD Pro has like more of a race refined, I believe it's a Fox suspension system. I'm personally not as interested in the TRD Pro, so I'm not as up to speed on it, but it has adjustable coilovers, um, adjustable basically dampening and stuff like that which is pretty cool. Um, and then the Trail Hunter is gonna have an old man emu suspension system that's more designed for carrying weight. So there's one thing right away. So you're getting a warranty with this lift. And uh, like I was saying, the TRD off-road is a little bit taller than some of the other models below it but the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter are an inch taller than that from what I understand. So the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter are gonna sit about three inches taller than the base one. It's basically a three inch lift kit that's covered with the factory warranty. And with that, these trucks, um, what I understand is the new Tacoma TRD off-road versions are three inches wider than the previous Tacoma TRD off-road. The TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter are six inches wider. So they're three inches wider even than the TRD off-road is, 
And a lot of that, a lot of people were hoping that that was going to be a long travel suspension system. It is not, it's mostly wheels. Toyota is very conservative with how they allow modifications on these trucks. They are um, very concerned about meeting safety standards. So they're not gonna give us a lot of what the other manufacturers are gonna give us. I believe the reason they gave us this wider stance without giving us an actual long travel suspension is to kind of make up for it. So when you put aftermarket wheels on and bigger tires, cause they probably know a lot of us are gonna put 35 inch tires on. I know that's my plan. And these are designed to where uh, it should fit a 35 inch tire much easier than the previous generations did. And so I believe what they did is they basically widen those fenders out to where when we do put bigger tires on it, um, it's actually gonna work as a proper fender versus just sticking out immediately because the wheels, in my opinion, have gotta go anyway, it's an 18 inch wheel and I'm sure they did that for cooling. And I guess we can just jump into that. So the TRD off-road, the TRD Pro and the TRD Trail Hunter, all the hybrid models, they are going to come with an 18 inch wheel. The reason for that is because these models have a bigger brake system. You have the base brake system, you have the TRD off-road brake system, and then you have the hybrid brake system. And it is a 13 inch brake rotor, um, from what I understand, front and rear. So you have a massive brake rotor, and that is because they have to slow down something that is going to have a higher payload. And we'll get into that here in a minute. With the Trail Hunter and the TRD Pro, we are getting forged aluminum upper control arms. These aluminum upper control arms offer a half an inch more of travel, which doesn't sound like a lot, but a lot of people spent a lot of money getting a half an inch more of travel out of their suspension system. So I'm very happy to see that. So along with the suspension system, um, there is a hydraulic bump stop on the TRD Pro from the factory, which is pretty cool if you ask me. So for those of you that don't know, a bump stop is just basically a rubber bushing and you'll see those by your suspension and it'll stop your axle from just smashing metal on metal. So the TRD Pro has a hydraulic bump stop which has been something you have to weld your frame traditionally on like the third gen second gens any other vehicle and what it does is it literally has a hydraulic system a hydraulic cylinder to where when you bottom that thing out and you jump your trd pro and that's the reason they gave it to that truck um, it'll actually soften that so anyway that's a pretty cool upgrade that's not really talked about that much but what i do know is that all of the other trucks that have a rear coil spring because of course these do have a coil spring now um, they have a mount, they have the threaded spot for these hydraulic um, bump stops. So even if you have a TRD off-road or you have a trail hunter or something like that, you can thread one of these on. So there are gonna be manufacturers producing these types of bump stops really quickly that just thread on. It should be a very simple installation versus having to weld to the frame. So that is very cool to see. So on the TRD Pro and Trail Hunter exclusively, they do have what's called like the Viper Cut from the Forerunner crowd. It's basically, if you look at the front of the bumper, the plastics have a little bit different of a shape to them to give you a better approach angle for rocks and stuff like that. And uh, you know, it's not gonna replace a metal bumper. A lot of us are going to put different bumpers on these things, but it's cool that they did it. So it's, you know, it's more capable. Um, a lot of us would have preferred a steel bumper. I think it makes sense because a lot of us are gonna choose our own bumper anyway. Toyota's probably only gonna sell an ARB system or an ARB front bumper, which is quality stuff, but we like to make our trucks individual and kind of do our own thing. So honestly, it makes sense uh, that they're doing it that way. And I'm sure with the aftermarket support that they're gonna have, you'll be able to buy that as a catalog thing and have your local dealership install it for you. The next thing is, of course, the light bar on these. It does have a rigid industry light bar. I believe it's 20,000 lumens. It's, it's more than the Tundra has on output, so I'm sure they'll be updating the Tundra. On that note, the TRD Pro and Trail Hunter have the rigid industries white and amber fog lights, and the TRD Off-Road does have those lights, those same looking lights, but I don't believe they're rigid, and I do know that they are not the white and amber. They, they reserve that for the, the halo trims, as they call them. So next are the skid plates, specifically on the Trail Hunter are going to be some of the strongest steel plates that they offer. They are saying that, that it's a high strength steel and I'm definitely gonna test that out because I wanna know how big of a hit that these can take. Even though it's high strength steel, they're pretty thin. So I see myself going to an aftermarket uh, setup, but I do wanna test them out because maybe I'm wrong. I don't know much about uh, metallurgy. So maybe they've done something amazing here, but I do know that the Trail Hunter has the entire skid plate system all the way back to the rear differential is protected so that's very cool to see because obviously the diff can take a lot of hits and especially if you have an overland build you get a lot of weight back there you don't want to pop a hole in your rear differential of course um so anyway it's cool to see that it just comes with all of this stuff and then the trd pro is going to have its aluminum skid plates so they're trying to make the trd pro more of a racer and then the trail hunter of course is more of the rock crawler and the overlander 
and uh, that sort of a thing. So the rear bumper on the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter is going to be standard. It's gonna be the steel bumper from ARB. It's got the factory recovery points. It has all the sensors built into it, which is pretty cool to see. So, uh, and, and in my opinion, that's gonna be where most people hit the most. I've got a steel bumper on the FJ. I rarely hit anything with that steel bumper. The real reason I have it is for a winch and because I don't wanna take uh, an elk to the front of a plastic bumper on my vehicle, it would probably total it. So. Um, Honestly, the steel bumper on the rear makes more sense. And uh, again, they probably didn't do the front bumpers because people are gonna swap them out and it wouldn't do very good for crash test certifications. So Toyota has to kind of do the dance to get these things to pass specifications. Toyota is big on having safe vehicles from the factory. They wanna have some of the highest scores out there. So that's the reason they're not doing steel. I know a lot of us are like, why can't we do that? Well, there's gonna be plenty of manufacturers within the first six months selling bumpers for these. I've known I'm gonna get this truck for a while. I've talked firsthand to some of the manufacturers at the expo this last year. And trust me, they are all working and just ready to go. And um, on that note, I know a lot of them got access at SEMA. Uh, SEMA Garage had the Tacomas on hand. So all these guys could start designing roof racks for these things, bumpers for these things. I'm sure suspension systems for these, they had the wheels off, they're taking stuff apart. So there's gonna be way more aftermarket support for these than even I expected. Part of the reason I wanted to get a trail hunter is because I didn't expect there to be much aftermarket support for a good six to 12 months. I know it's the Tacoma, it's a big thing. It's kind of like a, a Wrangler almost um, for the Toyota guys. There's gonna be tons of aftermarket support, but I didn't expect Toyota to basically open their doors up and let people come and uh, take all sorts of scans and measurements and stuff. So it's gonna happen a lot faster than I even anticipated, but I do not regret putting a deposit on the Trail Hunter because um, I want some of what it has to offer. Rock rails on the Trail Hunter and rocker guards on the Pro. So the Pro has basically body mounted rocker guards. That's to stop rocks from coming up into the body and protecting it when you're hauling ass off road. Trail Hunter has rock rails that are mounted to the frame, but they're not step style uh, rock rails I have to add. So it is gonna be a very protective barrier. It's good to have that. It's one of the first things I would recommend putting on an off-roader anyway, but uh, it's gonna come with it from the factory and they are rated for half of the vehicle's weight. So you can take a big hit on that thing and be plenty fine. So that's good to hear. Okay, so let's jump into steering on this thing. One of the big things that really caught my ear when I was listening to some of these videos was uh, the chief engineer Sheldon talking about the steering. So the TRD Pro and the TRD Off-Road are getting an exclusively different steering rack. Um, they basically designed a new one for these systems to where, because it's a wider stance, it's gonna have more force on it. So anyway, there is gonna be a different steering rack for those systems, and it's not gonna be something you can get through the reman industry right away. It's probably gonna take a couple years if I were to guess, and these are electric steering racks, so it's probably gonna be pretty expensive if you wanted to put that on something like a TRD off-road. I was very happy to hear this because this means that they are thinking about this mechanically and they're truly thinking about people and how we're gonna modify these things. And so it is gonna set this truck apart from some of the others. Since the extra width of the Trail Hunter and the Pro is the wheels and not a wider suspension, it seems excessive that Toyota would produce a separate steering rack just for cosmetic reasons. This appears to be designed for those of us who wanna mount larger tires and long travel suspension systems on a more narrow aftermarket wheel. The wide fenders will stop mud from slinging all over the truck and the steering will struggle less with the large tires. And then last for the steering, upgraded CV axles. So I do know, and I did hear this from the chief engineer when I was at the Overland Expo, they were talking about how these trucks now have an upgraded CV axle to deal with the torque. Toyota has been notorious in the past for once you've lifted these trucks, you have such a um, extreme angle on your CV that you basically have these gears and it will break them because you're basically putting it at its weakest point. They have gone through on these new trucks and redesigned those to where it has a much stronger unit. Now, I believe that this is exclusive to the hybrid and to the, the halo trims. I might be wrong on that, but I do remember that the chief engineer was saying at the Overland Expo that people are gonna find out pretty quick that you can just swap those out, but it is a much stronger part. And I, for one, know that Toyota builds some really strong stuff because I've even seen guys go aftermarket on their rear axle shafts and they end up going back to uh, the stock ones. Like Jailbreak Overlander, for instance, he had an 80 series and uh, he twisted an aftermarket uh, chromoly shaft and he ended up going back to Toyota. He'd never had problems with the Toyota stuff. So that was on an 80 series, of course. Point being is that Toyota does make durable metals, durable steels, durable casts. And so I was very happy to hear that they have upgraded the CVs. So uh, time will tell how much stronger they are and how much they can put up with, but that's very cool to hear. So the differentials. So from what I understand, the rear differential of this thing on the hybrids is a nine and a half inch differential, which is 
Really good to hear. That is what the, the 80 series Land Cruiser had, which for those that don't know the 80 series, I'm sure most of you do know, but that is like basically Toyota's most legendary Land Cruiser they've ever built. Had a nine and a half inch front and rear diff and it basically didn't have any power. So you couldn't break that diff. So going to a nine and a half inch rear is awesome to hear, but with 465 pound feet of torque, especially at low RPMs, it is kind of intimidating um, that it's a nine and a half. Like I, honestly, I'm sure they did their testing, but I don't know that it's as overbuilt as like the nine and a half inch that I put in my FJ because this new truck is gonna have twice the torque almost as my FJ does. So uh, something to be mindful about. It's basically the differential out of the Tundra. They're pulling parts from these vehicles because a lot of them have similarities now, which time will tell once again, if some of those parts can cross over, we'll see in the front differential. This is secondhand information. I don't know this for sure, but with the hybrids, there was talk of they had to upgrade the front differential as well, and that the front differential will be a nine inch, which is massive. The old Toyotas had a third gen, the FJs, the Forerunners, they had an eight inch front differential and that clamshaft design is nearly indestructible. People have put massive tires on those things and you'll snap an axle long before you blow that diff. I personally haven't heard of anybody blowing the front diff. Rear diff's a different story, but um, the fact they're going up a full inch on that is, uh, is very cool to see. And uh, I think they probably had to because they're upgrading these axle shafts. And again, it's got so much torque. So that's awesome. Okay, so let's get into engine performance. So there's only a few items here. Raised air intake. So the Trail Hunter does have a raised air intake. It's not a true snorkel. It's probably got some sort of a drain hole in it, but I guarantee there's gonna be some way to modify this thing where you plug a few holes, something like that. Even the Land Cruiser 70 series over uh, overseas, they don't have a true snorkel system. Those are advertised the same way. They don't want people driving their trucks through water because then they have to deal with warranty claims and lawsuits and stuff like that. But the Trail Hunter is the only one you're gonna be able to get that with. It's not an aftermarket part. Of course, companies like ARB are going to come out with other snorkel systems for the TRD off-road and for the pros and stuff like that. The one thing I don't like about the Trail Hunter raised air intake is it doesn't have room for a top hat or a uh, pre-filter on it. I was kind of bummed to see that because mine on the FJ definitely filters out a lot of dirt. Even though the Trail Hunter has a rear facing snorkel system, I'm not confident that that's gonna filter out as much dust as something like a pre-filter does. Just because if I'm driving behind one of my friends through the desert, they're still gonna be just plumes and the engine's gotta pull it from there anyway there's not going to be as much dust but still it's going to be one of those things but i am happy to see that it has that system but again that is only available on the trail hunter that's not going to be an aftermarket option because we're talking a different fender and everything with that system so the exhaust systems i will link a video where you can hear the trail hunter rev up and you can hear what the snorkel and the exhaust sounds like and it sounds so cool at least to me i know a lot of you don't like the sound of these four cylinders but uh, i think it sounds incredible and so there is going to be a different exhaust system per trim. The Pro has its own exhaust system that's a performance exhaust. So the Trail Hunter does have a bobbed exhaust system. It's basically a high tucked cut system that dumps right in front of the rear axle. So it's up and out of the way of rocks and stuff like that. And some of these exhaust systems, I'm not sure exactly which ones, but I do know for a fact that with your TRD off-road or other truck, um, you can get these different exhaust systems aftermarket. And when you get it from Toyota, it includes a tune to get a little bit more performance out of the truck. Okay, so that was quick, but that's all I have for engine performance. Braking system. So I know I touched on this a little bit before, but let's dive into this a little bit more. So this truck is going to come with three different brake packages. There's gonna be base brake system, there's gonna be a slightly upgraded system, and there's gonna be the big brake system on the TRD off-road. So these trucks, specifically on the iForce Max, the hybrid, is going to have the third largest brake system, the largest brake system, which is a 13-inch brake rotor front and rear and these are disc brakes across the board but these halo trims do have the largest version of these brakes and uh that is why they had to put an 18 inch wheel on these trucks which a lot of us off-roaders don't want to see because we want more sidewall out of our tire but they had to do that because they need to cool these systems now it's unclear if we can actually fit a 17 inch wheel over the top of them toyota may have had to do an 18 inch wheel for their own testing to make sure that it stays cooler because if you put a 17 on it might clear but it might not allow enough cooling for extreme scenarios where you need all that braking but um Time will tell, we won't know that for a little while. I do know that the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter have braided stainless steel brake lines to these things to um, basically to help with that performance. With a stainless steel brake line, you don't get as much uh, expansion as you would from like a rubber brake line. So 
the stainless steel is going to be, it's just going to make the brakes work that much better. Um, I really hope that you can fit a smaller wheel over the top of these though. We will see what happens with that. So part of the braking system and why they have such a massive brake is because they have a lot of power. So they need to be able to slow all of that down. It's a heavier truck, but they have a bigger payload. So we will get into that category now. So all of the TRD off-road models, which will include the TRD off-road, the TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter, they all have an extra cross member. And this is for strength and this is for uh, mounting skid plates too. So you don't have like a big hollow spot basically from the skid plates. This is on the front of the truck. So with any of the off-road models, you are getting more of an increased durability just because of that. Along with the payload, like we were just talking about, the payload on these trucks is 1,710 pounds on the hybrid systems. Time will tell if that's going to be affected and I'm sure it will be by like the Trail Hunter coming with rock rails and the Trail Hunter coming with a steel bumper and different options like that. And so part of that is why they had to put such a big brake system on these. Toyota doesn't just build a brake system that's enough to slow something down. They over-engineer it as they always have, and that's why these things are so reliable. So I'm very happy to see that they have uh, upped the payload. So one of the first videos I did on these new Tacomas in November of 2022, um, I was talking about how I didn't think that the new Tacoma was gonna be like a mini Tundra. I thought the Tundra was gonna be a big Tacoma. And, um, Looks wise, I was correct on that. They wanted to re-engineer that truck to look similar to the Tacoma. They didn't do the best job with that, if I'm uh, being totally honest. But what I will say is that this new Tacoma is actually a small Tundra. Because uh, if you look at some of the components and the way these things are built, this is the first time in a long time that we've gotten a significantly more durable Tacoma. Because in the early days, they were a lot like the Hilux. I would argue that this truck is a lot like the Tundra. They're sharing, you know, it's not the exact same frame, but the way these things are welded and put together is very similar. I would not be surprised if we see shared parts. Now the Tundra, the Sequoia, the Land Cruiser, and the Tacoma, and then the new 4Runner are all gonna be on the TNGAF platform. That doesn't mean they're all the exact same frame. There are gonna be differences. But what I will say is this is like a mini Tundra as far as durability goes. And also this is a Land Cruiser truck. And I think that that is an important thing to put together. And I know a lot of you are mad about the new Land Cruiser because it's not a true Land Cruiser, it's a Land Cruiser Prado. But this truck, this Tacoma is a lot like a Land Cruiser. And I am very happy to see that because the Land Cruiser is Toyota's pinnacle stuff. And of course there's the 300 series that's gonna be even more durable. But as far as uh, most of us and the way we use these things, if the third gen could put up with hauling all this weight and being built out into an overland truck like they were, then I have no doubts that this new generation is gonna be able to do the same thing. I'm very happy to see that we got this uh, reinforced frame, fully boxed frame. It's gonna be a much stronger truck. It's gonna be a little more rigid, but I think it's gonna pay off. And then also, while we're talking about the frame, um, there have been rust issues in the past with Toyotas and the new frame actually has holes, drain holes, because that's been a big problem is uh, water has gotten in between parts of the frame and it doesn't necessarily have a good place to drain out. So the frame does have drain spots pretty much all over it. So a lot of that stuff's gonna fall out of there. And another thing is the way the frame is built now, they use that new welding technique where they can strengthen parts of the frame where it needs to be strengthened and they're welding it. And part of that is because there will no longer be sheet metal in the frame that's stacked on top. So uh, what that led to in the past is corrosion, water, salt, all sorts of stuff gets in between that. And that's a lot of the reason why these frames are rusting. And I do believe the new frames have some sort of a wax coating to them but uh, I still haven't seen confirmed information on that. I believe I heard that from one of the engineers when I believe it was TRD John's video where he walks around the frame with one of the, uh, the powertrain engineer, I think is who it was. Right, one last thing on the payload. So I was reading through the manual on these trucks and this is for the non-hybrids, but uh, it's kind of interesting how this is worded. In the manual, it says the vehicle capacity weight, the rated cargo and luggage load, plus 150 pounds times the designated seating capacity. I would very much like Toyota to clarify on that because it is listed that way in the manual. You can read this on the Tacoma World forums or in the user manual if you have one of these trucks. So one more time, it does say the luggage load plus 150 pounds times the designated seating capacity. So if you have a five-seater Tacoma, that's 150 times five. So I would very much like to know what's going on there. So let's say you got one that was a 1700 pound right on the dot payload, you would technically have 750 pounds on top of that. And I, I, you know, that's published. So I'd very much like to know what the story is there because most vehicles, um, once you fill it up with people, you know, your payload's pretty much gone. So Toyota, please clarify that. Let's jump into the next category, which are interior luxuries. 
So I think a lot of us have sticker shock with how expensive these new trucks are gonna be, especially with all the new features. But I do have to say that these things are going to have way more features than we would have gotten in previous generations. And they did option these out. So you can still get a Tacoma that's cheaper. You're just not gonna get a giant screen if you even really need that. The sway bar disconnect, stuff like that, which uh, there have been recent tests from Motor Trend that you should check out. They're on YouTube as well. I'll try to put some of these links in the description box below so you guys can check these out. But um, they did some flex tests with the sway bar disconnected and it is very impressive. And um, the sway bar, I did find out you can disconnect that while it's under load, kind of like the Bronco can do. So that's pretty cool. It didn't work in his video, but I think it's designed to where it can do that in the final versions. The interiors of these things are going to be Land Cruiser-like. And I've been giving this a lot of thought lately because um, I, just like anybody else, I think, well, this thing has a lot of electronics. It's overly complicated. I'm worried about some of the durability and the reliability with this thing. But if we think back to the Land Cruiser 200 series, sure, it was still outdated by the time they discontinued it, but even the 300 series now, they have a lot of features that are electronic. They've got a lot of things built into them and they've had it for a long time and they've done fine. You know, they're a $95,000 truck, but it was a luxury off-roader. So um, when we see some of these luxuries, I gotta kind of think back to that to remind myself like this isn't anything new. And part of the pricing that goes into these vehicles is because once again, this is a Land Cruiser pickup truck. So with my point on the Land Cruiser being a luxury vehicle is that these vehicles, part of the cost is because they are a luxury off-roader. Uh, from some of the videos that I've watched, they do have like even a softer foam in the seats. At least that's the impression I got from some people that had driven one and then they got to sit in the vehicles. They didn't get a ride in them yet, but when they sat in the seats, they were like, wow, these are really comfortable. Like these are the most comfortable in the bunch. And so uh, what I'm assuming is the same seat material that you get in something like the Limited, you're gonna get an upgraded foam in that seat. You're getting obviously more premium materials. You're getting heated and ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel. So these kinds of things add up and it is a luxury off-roader. When I compare this to my FJ Cruiser out there, it is such a different vehicle. And so that's a lot of what's going on with the cost. So along with some of the other features that are kind of uh, luxury oriented, and I don't believe you can get in some of the other trims. These upper trims do have active noise cancellation built into them. And I do know that these trucks have more sound deadening than they used to. So you're filtering out a lot of the outside sound. They're supposed to be much more quiet, which is cool to hear, especially for me, because I'm always doing video and trying to filter out some of that trail noise will be very nice. But they also have an active noise cancellation system which I don't even know how that's gonna work, but I do know that at least the Trail Hunter and the TRD Pro have them. Maybe some of the other models have them, I'm not entirely sure. So these things do have a heads up display, which means that it is projecting your speed and a few other bits of information up on your windshield. So you don't necessarily have to look down. Honestly, like I don't really care about that myself, but maybe it'll be nice. I've never driven anything like that. But again, it's a luxury truck. So these upper trims, these are going to be expensive. Okay, so let's dive into a little bit of the hybrid information and some of this should crossover with uh, the TRD off-road and the limited models as well. With the hybrid system, this truck does have the exact same hybrid system from the Tundra. It's the same motor and everything. It's the same system. Again, I covered this in my, my other videos that this system is designed for power. It's not designed for efficiency, but with a smaller truck like the Tacoma, you can gain efficiency. This truck in particular, because it's lighter weight, it will stay in the hybrid mode longer. That's per the engineer saying this. Who knows how long, we don't know fuel economy yet. While nothing's official yet, the same hybrid powertrain is in the 2024 Land Cruiser. And for a brief time, Toyota had 27 miles per gallon listed on their website. There is a glimmer of hope that this could be true for the Tacoma as well, as the TFL channel found that the non-hybrid Tacoma got better fuel economy than what Toyota claimed. We should know more details in the next month or two. So the 2400 watt inverter is going to be in the back seat on the hybrids as well as in the bed. Those systems can run at 2400 watts whether the truck is driving or not. With older Toyotas, you had a 400 watt system. And then when you put it in drive, it, it would uh, cut down to 100 watts. This system stays in 2400 watts no matter what you're doing, but you cannot use it with the truck off. I did learn that because the chief engineer is talking to somebody during a review. Um, I believe it was Toyota Jeff Reviews. He was talking about how you can get a battery pack for your refrigerator, run it overnight, and then the next day when you're driving, you can charge that battery back up. So that's kind of disappointing to hear, I have to say, but that is the information that I've gathered is you can't use this as like basically a camping battery. There's scene lighting that you can get on these trucks. I believe it's standard on the Trail Hunter that basically helps light up your campsite and then you can get it as an option on some of the others. I don't know what battery that's drawing off of, but I would assume that it's going to be drawing off of the hybrid battery just because you don't want to run your, your uh, starter battery down. But 
Who knows, because the starter battery isn't as important on these hybrid systems. And again, we'll get into that here in a moment. And with the hybrid system, what I wanna to touch on is that this thing does in fact have a a traditional starter. It's the same exact engine as the non-hybrid. For the vehicle to run, it has to have a 12 volt battery. And in this truck, it's not under the hood because there's some, um, the brains of the hybrid system are up under the hood, but the 12 volt battery is in the back seat under the seat. So you are losing storage there. I'm sure you guys have seen that in other videos, but that 12 volt system, um, the way it can operate as a traditional vehicle would is it still has that battery. But for the most part, you're not starting the vehicle off of your traditional starter. You basically have that as a backup system. So if somebody needs to jump start you, then they can hook up to that and then you can jump. But uh, usually from day to day use, the system is going to start off of that electric motor that is between the engine and the transmission. So that motor charges the batteries and that motor also starts the truck. So um, there's gonna be a lot of times you're sitting in traffic and you start driving and it's full electric. So you won't even hear the vehicle start. And from what I understand, the people that have driven these things, you don't really hear the truck a lot of the time anyway. Um, and it's a very seamless transition where it just basically starts it right up. There's no, there's no like cranking over like on a traditional engine but it is good to know that it does have a traditional starting system because if something does happen with the hybrid system or the battery is completely dead or something like that, and I believe at lower temperatures and winter conditions, the system will automatically make it start off of the traditional starter versus the hybrid system. So anyway, that's how that works. Okay, so some of the major things that I'm interested in that I do not know about, I hope some of you can help me with this, whether you work for Toyota, you're a technician or something, or uh, you're in sales, maybe you can find out some of this. So something I'm very interested in is how winching is going to work. Because traditionally, when you run a winch to your battery, whenever you start winching, your alternator is gonna start screaming and trying to make up for that power because a winch can use 300 to 500 amps, which you know typically it's not using all of that, but it can use that much. So I'm very interested in how winching is going to work on these trucks. So let me just clarify that I do know winching will be possible on this. I'm just interested for like the nerd factor of how exactly the hybrid system works to replenish energy back to the battery. So because the hybrid systems do not have an alternator, they are creating their electricity from that motor that's sandwiched in between the transmission and the engine. I'm very curious. Uh, I would assume that they have a huge output because they're charging a 288 volt battery. So I'm very curious what the limit of that is because if I'm winching and my winch is using 400 amps, let's say, I'm curious if this hybrid motor will be able to make up for that. Like traditionally, if you don't have an upgraded alternator and you're winching a lot, you'll see your lights dim. Um, I'm curious with this system, if because it's capable of putting out so much power, if maybe that won't even happen anymore. I guess I'm just curious on how much of a load the hybrid system can supply to the 12 volt battery system. I looked around and tried to find videos about people putting winches in the Tundras, and I don't know that many people have really given much thought on how that system works. I still know for winching, you're gonna wanna upgrade your factory battery from just a starting battery to something that's more of like a deep cycle so it can put up with that load more, but uh, I'm interested also and how big of a battery you can fit in there. But I just wanna know what the amperage limitation is from the hybrid system to that. Is it gonna be equivalent to a 200 amp alternator? Because traditionally in my FJ, I upgraded from the 100 amp to 130 amp that the Tacoma got. And uh, it does struggle a little bit whenever I'm trying to winch. And so uh, since we're not gonna be able to get an upgraded alternator in these hybrid systems, I would very much like to know what we're going to be allowed to draw from that hybrid system. So another thing I wanna know is I do know that the Trail Hunter comes standard with the air compressor system. I would very much like to know if that is a dual compressor or if that's the single compressor, because if it's the single compressor, honestly, it's not as valuable in my opinion. Also, I would like to know with the air compressor if there's a tank or if a tank is optional. I have, uh, I heard a few rumors about that, but then I never saw anything more on it. And I'm very interested if you can get an air tank. And of course you can just do one and install one aftermarket. So anyway, those are some of my questions for this truck. Okay, so last thing here is the price. The price on these is to be determined. There is no uh, real answer to how much these things are gonna cost. We've only seen the TRD off-road with the premium package, and that's not hybrid. That truck, uh, if you get a lot of the options on that truck, it's pushing like $50,000. It basically is matching the price of the old TRD Pro. Now you're getting a lot more than you would have gotten on the TRD Pro, but still, it's, an, it's a very expensive truck. And a lot of people are like, I'm not paying that for a mid-size truck. I get it, it's expensive, but I have to say that these are hardly a mid-size truck anymore. If you compare this to the first generation Tundra, these are now a full-size truck. If you get the long wheelbase version of this truck, the dual cab long bed, 
it is the length of an F-150, a crew cab F-150, exactly. They're 144 inches wheelbase. So anyway, in my opinion, this is a full-size truck. It's got the uh, torque numbers and the horsepower numbers of a full-size truck. And it's got really the footprint at this point of a full-size truck, unfortunately. And because of that long wheelbase, that's why I'm getting the short bed. I would love to have the long bed, but it's just too long. So um, as the prices go, I have seen a lot of speculation. I posted something recently on my community tab. Those prices were way off. Um, I apologize for even sharing that. I thought that that was legit. But uh, I would, I'm going to speculate, and a lot of it is just speculation, but there's a lot of thought that these trucks are gonna be about $65,000, which I could see happening, and they might even be more than that. I mean, the Sequoias are incredibly expensive, and I know a lot of you are like, well, I'll just buy a full size for that price range then. I mean, go for it if you can fit one down the trails, but for me, this is basically a Tundra that I can fit on trails. Um, having a six inch wider vehicle than the previous one, I, I haven't really looked into how much wider it is in my FJ, but it's going to be a wider vehicle, but I need the shorter wheelbase. So I know for a lot of you guys, it's like, I'm just gonna buy a full-size truck at that price point. For me, I can't fit on a lot of the trails. And uh, this thing is everything I've wanted it to be, quite honestly, I'm very excited about this truck. I am getting the Trail Hunter. I'm hoping to have this thing by June, assuming there's not a bunch of delays, which are always possible. I've got some cool trips planned with other creators that I know that are planning on getting some of these vehicles too. Um, there's one where we might, we might compare it to the Land Cruiser, we might compare it to another Trail Hunter, or we might compare it to a previous generation Tacoma. So there's gonna be some pretty cool stuff coming up this year on this channel. So if you guys are interested in Tacoma stuff, and I'm not getting rid of the FJ, so that's gonna be here as well, though the Tacoma is gonna get most of the love this year. But um, I'm gonna be doing all sorts of trips with this thing. I'll be doing some towing testing. I will be doing some off-roading and, um, and then I'm gonna start modifying this thing pretty much right away. So I will have a new version of the Trifecta T coming out with the new vehicles here pretty quick. But for now, um, I do have the previous generation Trifecta T. A lot of us will still continue to own those older vehicles. So I have some pretty cool shirts on the website if you guys wanna check those out and I've got stickers and stuff like that. I've recently partnered with Onyx Off-Road. Um, they've been a very cool company. They've made a lot of strides in the industry and uh, they really listen to what customers want and I've been using their app more and more. So for 2024, I'm partnering with Onyx Off-Road. I'm very excited about it. If you wanna get a membership with Onyx Off-Road, use code OVERLAND20 for 20% off and uh, it'll help the channel out and I appreciate it. Okay guys, so that's what I have for now on these new trucks. Um, as I have more information, I will update some of this and share that information with you. In the next couple months, we will be hearing more on the 4Runner and then before that, I will try to do some more on the Land Cruiser. I'm really hoping a dealership will reach out to me and let me go drive one for like a day maybe. Um, I don't know if my channel's like big enough for that kind of stuff. I'll see what I can do for you guys and I will do more videos on all of this stuff. I'm very excited about what Toyota is doing right now. They're doing some really cool stuff. And so anyway, that's what I have for you. If you guys have questions for the next video, drop them below, whether that's 4Runner stuff, Land Cruiser stuff, Tacoma stuff, Trail Hunter Pro, whatever you guys wanna know, um, I will try to get as much information for you as I possibly can. For you guys that have stuck around till the end, thank you very much. Uh, again, Onyx Off-Road, Overland 20 for 20% off. Go check out the Trifecta Tees on the website. I got other merch on there as well. So I'll have more stuff coming soon. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. As always, thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road and overland related content.